Ladies and gentlemen, to the I would like to call to order the special meeting for for September 30th, 2021 for the City Council. And I'd like to share also that this is a public comments on this special meeting. Our agenda items are pursuant to government code section 54954.3A. The members of the public will be provided an opportunity to address any items described on the, and this agendas only, only these two agendas, no other agendas. At the same, uh, at the time the matter is considered by the Oxford City Council. So Madam uh, Clerk, uh, roll call and posting of the agenda. Yes, Mayor. Council Member Lopez. Here. Council Member Madrigal. Here. Council Member Perello. Here. Council Member Tehran. Here. Council Member McDonald. Here. Mayor Zaragoza. Here. We have quorum. The Thank you, and please join me to salute to the flag of the United States of America. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mayor, can we have a moment of silence for the kid that was killed in the bicycle? Go ahead. Um, this moment of silence and go ahead for who for um, the young man that was bicycle accident. Bicycle accident. Okay. Moment of silence. Thank you. Mayor, if I may announce that Council Member Basua has also joined the meeting. Thank and you. I'd also like to make an announcement about the posting of the agenda. The agenda for this meeting was posted in the City Hall Bulletin Board on September 27, 2021. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So our next item is a, a um, public hearing, September 30th, 2021, City Council item B1, redistricting of City Council districts. This is a time and place to set for a public hearing on item B1 by the City Attorney. Subject, public hearing regarding redistricting of the City Council districts. The recommendation that the City Council conduct a public hearing to one, receive a report and redistricting process for the city council districts and the criteria to be considered in revising district boundaries. Two, receive a report on the final adjusted census numbers of each existing city council districts. And three, receive a presentation regarding the public mapping tool for drawing city council district maps. And we start off with the city clerk's uh, certification of publication and any written communication, if any. Madam Clerk. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Mm -hmm. Mayor, there was a legal notice for this public hearing published in the Ventura County Viva newspaper on September 16th and September 23rd, 2021. And, this, and also on the city's website on September 25th, 2021, the city clerk's office has received written communication on this item which has been forwarded to council for their consideration. Okay, thank you, Madam Clerk. And now the city attorney will now introduce a demographic consultant who will provide a presentation regarding this item. And following the presentation, will be available to answer any brief clar clarifying questions by council members that it may have before we take any public testimony on this item. And then council will have the opportunity to provide additional feedback after the public hearing has been closed. Is there any? Yes. Go ahead. Um. Yes. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council. Ken Roselle with the City Attorney's Office. This evening, Kristen Parks of National Demographics will make a presentation uh, regarding the redistricting matter, and afterwards, will be available for questions. Welcome, Christian. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. I am going to share my screen so you can see um, a PowerPoint that I have put together. All right, here we go. That covers the redistricting process and what we can expect now that we have the official final 
census data to work with. So as you all know, Oxnard has six council districts. These city council districts were adopted in 2018 and they were drawn using data from the previous census in 2010. Now that we are in 2021, we finally have data from the 2020 census, which we are required by law to use to reconsider these boundaries every 10 years. So in our timeline, we did hold the first public hearing for redistricting actually prior to the release of the census data, which was significantly delayed this year. We expected to receive data from the Census Bureau at the end of March, 2021. But as you can see here, we did not receive that data until August 12th, 2021. And then the state of California went through an additional process of adjusting the data that was released um, late September 20th in the evening and then actually re-released on September 27th. So we have had a very busy week combing through the adjustments that the state of California has made to that data. But the good news is, is that we have everything we need now to look at official numbers for redistricting. This means that we're well positioned to open up this process to the public for them to participate either by submitting maps or making public comment, uh, attesting to their communities of interest that they would like to be considered in this process. Uh, there are five public hearings in total that have been scheduled and ultimately the council must adopt a new district map by April 17th of 2022. Of course, the reason for that is to be ready for the November 2022 election. So this is our timeline. And I know you've heard this previously, but I am going to review the legal requirements for redistricting because it is a different process than the districting process that the city went through a few years ago. Redistricting uh, first and foremost is governed by federal law, which is supreme. And the first thing federal law says is that each district must be relatively equal in population size. Federal law also gives us the Federal Voting Rights Act, which says that when drawing district boundaries, we must take care to not dilute the voting power of any protected class of voters. So for this reason, we look at um, voting age citizen data by uh, race and ethnicity so that we can see information about voters. However, we have to avoid racial gerrymandering, uh, which is defined as drawing district boundaries predominantly looking at race or only looking at race. It should never be the predominant or sole feature or characteristic we look at. For that reason, I'll be showing you additional demographic data and we have even more extensive data from the census available uh, to map across the city. So California law is also brand new and what, what it is is the Fair Maps Act, which is given every city in California going through this process, a rank ordered list of criteria. And we have to consider these criteria in this order as we look at the district boundaries. So first is to ensure that our districts are contiguous, which simply means that each district should be one whole piece, every part of it connected, no disconnected pieces separate. The second criterion is to minimize the division of neighborhoods and communities of interest. The intention here is to ensure that neighborhoods and communities have a fair chance to be represented on the city council by being kept whole within a single district and not being split and divided if that neighborhood or community so wishes to be intact. The third criterion is to create easily identifiable boundaries for the districts, which is easily accomplished by having our boundary lines follow roads or waterways or other easily identifiable features. And finally, 
California law says our districts should be compact. While there are many ways that academics measure compactness, it is defined in state law as districts that are drawn so that they do not bypass a nearby area of population to take in a farther away area of population. So as you can imagine, when you do things like that and you get districts that aren't compact, they often have very funny looking shapes. Um, and so that is something that is on this list. However, it is last. And finally, the state says we cannot discriminate or favor political parties. So we're not even going to look at voter registration by party or any of that kind of thing because it doesn't play in in this process. Certainly the city of Oxnard may have other goals that are either unique to the city or other things that folks bring to the table that they want to talk about as we consider district boundaries. And the reason I have number three other goals here is just to remind everyone that we can consider other things. However, only after we have addressed federal and state law to ensure our compliance. So that's a lot, but it is important, I think, for the public, for full transparency to know exactly what's governing this process. And as we start looking at maps in the future, we will be referring back to these laws. So, here is our demographic summary. It is a lot on one slide and there's even more than this, but let me point out what's important here. After the state adjusted Oxnard's population, we have a total 2020 population number of 202,614. That number gives us a ideal district size because we take that number, the total population, divide it by the number of districts, and we get 33,769 people, more or less. And that is sort of our magic number when we are looking at the districts and their demographic analysis. We want to try to aim for close to that ideal district size number when drawing our districts. So what you see here is by district, one, two, three, four, five, six, you see not only the total population of that district in 2020 per the final redistricting data, on the column below, you see how far off is that number from the ideal 33,769. So, and then below that, you see a percent deviation. So how, to what percentage is the district deviating from that ideal number. And uh, the negative numbers that you see here indicate that that district is smaller than the ideal size. So the negative numbers indicate that perhaps we'll, we will be adding population to those districts. And likewise, the districts with positive numbers for deviation and percentage deviation are overpopulated relative to the ideal. So those are districts that will potentially be losing some population to get closer to the ideal size. Now, why do we care about all of this? Well, the reason that we do is, as I just mentioned, federal law says that our districts should be equal in population size, more or less, right? There is wiggle room. And what we're looking at is in terms of that wiggle room, we, we are aiming for a total deviation under 10%. So what you see here in red is the total deviation. What that number means is if you take the population of the largest district and subtract the population of the smallest district, you're gonna get a number. And then that number is divided by the ideal district size and then you get a total deviation percentage. So that's where that number is coming from. Um, if anyone wants to do that math and, and see where it's coming from, um, it currently looks like in 2020 that there is a population imbalance for Oxnard. This is completely normal as 10 years have passed uh, since, not since the lines were drawn before, but since the data used to draw the lines. <laughs> 
was collected. Now, I, we often get questions at NBC about the census numbers. Um, do we have to use them? Are they totally accurate, et cetera? And I do want to let you know that uh, we do have to use these numbers regardless of whether or not you feel that they are completely accurate for your city. And I do want to mention that there, there is, and we don't know the full information yet, but we are seeing um, some areas having lower population than expected, particularly in heavily Latino areas. We don't yet know exactly what that might mean, but we do have to work with the data that we're given, and this is required by state law. So all of this demographic information and more can be shown and presented to you on city maps. So you can see geographically wh what the demographics are, not just at this district level, but down at the neighborhood and community level. So that is something that NDC will be preparing for you. And when we are inviting the public to participate in this process, one of the things that we're asking them is to think at that at that smaller level, right? Not just the district level, but to think about their neighborhoods and communities. And so we're inviting the public to bring comment and testimony about their neighborhoods and their communities of interest and where those boundaries are relative to the district lines. And if those neighborhoods or communities wish to be kept within a single council district so that they have one council member representing them. Most people are familiar with what a neighborhood is. However, the term communities of interest or community of interest that's used in redistricting is not a commonly understood term. It's defined for us in state law as a population that shares social and economic interests and wants to be included within a single district so it has a chance to be effectively represented. So when we talk about what's your community of interest or we wanna hear from the public about communities of interest, what we're talking about is a geographic area that can be subjectively defined by the people who are in that area that have common interests. And oftentimes those common interests are common experiences, uh, common problems or concerns that they might bring to city council to address, um, or even things like having a similar language that is spoken or a similar uh, experience with living around a certain park or school or uh, having certain concerns about traffic or what, you know, it's very subjective. So one of the things I, I like to tell the public is there's no wrong, there's no wrong way to define your community, as long as you can tell us what brings you together and where in Oxnard you're located so that we can take that testimony and consider it when we are looking at the district boundaries. A, a good way to think about a district is a district is simply a collection of neighborhoods and communities that are grouped together within one district. So we wanna figure out which neighborhoods and communities should be grouped together in each district. Um, other things you can think about, right? Uh, of course, our zoning, general plan. Um, again, this is very open and uh, NDC is happy to provide a lot of the data uh, mapped on maps to help identify these communities. Um, but I do not want to suggest or tell anyone in Oxnard what their community is, right? That is what you all have expertise in. And ultimately, we will be inviting the public to then if they wish to go beyond just making that comment and testimony about their communities of interest, their priorities for district boundaries, we want to invite them also to use mapping tools if they wish to actually draw district maps. So there are some wonderful tools available that we are currently working to get loaded with that uh, 
official data, right? Unfortunately, we had to wait so long for that data, but we do wanna make sure that when we give the public these tools, that we're giving them tools that are accurate, at, that they can use to draw population balance maps for the city. So there is an online mapping tool uh, that will be made available. Uh, we also have tutorial videos uh, and some step-by-step -step instructions for how to use the online tool. However, we recognize that not every member of the public has the time, the interest, or even the internet or computer access or savvy to use those tools. So we also will be creating for Oxnard, as you see here from 2018, paper maps that can be printed uh, and made available or downloaded and you can uh, draw on them uh, at home to draw your district maps. So there, these are the tools that we are going to make available really to empower the public uh, to drive this process uh, as much as, as they are engaged and interested to do so. So with that, I will close by uh, reminding any members of the public that we, we do want to hear from you. Um, and I am here also to take questions uh, from the council members and do my best to help you understand the process and what we're doing along the way. So thank you. Thank you, um, Madam Parks. Uh, excellent presentation. And I think we have uh, council member Bert Perello has his hand up. Got a question? Thank you very much. Uh, mm -hmm. Three questions right off the bat. I, you mentioned one of the one of the slides, public hearings. We have the date set. Is there an indication of where the public hearings are going to be? Yeah, so that depends on the city. A lot of our cities are, as you are, having the virtual option available. Um, but that is, you know, as that changes, and if there is a desire to have public hearings, uh, you know, open to the public in the chambers, then that that's an option as well. So uh, that's. You'll have to remind me. I mean, you all look like you, some of you are are at home. I, I don't know if anyone's in the chambers. Um, second question. You mentioned, quote, protected class under one of the protection, I believe federal. Give me a definition of protected class. Yes, absolutely. So the protected classes that we're talking about are the uh, Hispanic voters, African American voters, Asian American voters, um, uh, American Indian, Pacific Islander. You know, I'm kind of, hold on. I don't want to tell you anything wrong here. Doug, Doug's it. laughing at me. Give, give me all this. That's exactly oh, you're right. laughing at me. There's a list there. That, that yeah, so there is, a, there is a list available. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. I think it would be wise to put that on the on our site along with this, along with yeah. the comment to definition of what you meant. Race is never a dominant factor. Absolutely. Because it sounds a little contradictory. The protected class and race is never a dominant factor. Those are yeah, my questions, Mayor. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, uh, Madam Parks. I have uh, the question I have is uh, 2000, two, excuse me, 202,614. Is that the final count? Correct. I, I, I always thought that we were probably about 208,000, but, but that's what the number. So you said but potentially in some areas we had a, an undercount. Was that in the, in the South Oxnard area? Potentially. It potentially, I, I mean, across the city of Oxnard. Oh, across um, the city, okay. It, we don't actually know that uh, because that's not what we're here to do, right? We're not here to mm -hmm. identify where the undercount is. We're mm -hmm. here to use the data that we have to draw the best districts that we can for Oxnard, but it is something to be aware of if certainly you expected to see different, uh, like you said, a, a, a more growth, right? And we're seeing, and I just want you to know your situation is not unique. We are seeing that in other cities as well, that the, the projected population numbers were higher than what we actually are getting from the census. Okay, well, thank you so much. So anyway, I, uh, and then of course, uh, our residents are gonna be able to help us with the mapping of the, of the districts. And, and I was looking at the, under, what do we have? Uh, I think uh, uh, district number two is the one that's uh, off uh, by, what's the percentage on that, uh, Ken? 
It's 15.89% above, uh, it's the deviation above the ideal. 15%, uh, so that we're gonna have to work on then. That is correct. Okay, we have Councilman Turan. Yes, thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Ms. Parks, for the presentation. Um, in regards to the mapping process, I wanna thank the um, consultants. I wanna thank NDC for creating the ability and opportunity for folks to use paper if they prefer to do so. Uh, for folks who would like to access it online, um, do we know uh, where they'll be able to access that? Um, and then uh, an approximate timeline or time window when they'll be able to see that um, available? Absolutely. So the Maptitude software is can be linked directly from, from the city's website. And uh, what that will do will take them to another website where they do create an account to log in, then they can use that to directly submit the maps. Um, we work with an outside vendor, so a software company that's actually you know, doing that. So NDC doesn't have control over exactly the timeline. So I don't want to give you a, a date, um, but we are working with them. As I mentioned, just this week, we got that data. Um, so we are hoping that within, a, you know, two to three weeks that all of that will be updated uh, so that we can launch, launch these tools as soon as possible because we want to give the public as much time as they, they can get to interact with these tools keeping in mind that there will be sort of multiple opportunities for the public to, to submit maps. There'll be one deadline and then there'll be another deadline uh, as this process will be moving into 2022. Okay, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And I fully anticipate that our city communications staff will be fully um, preparing and announcing when that's ready to go. So thank you very much. And, uh, Council Member Turan, I'll, I'll add that there is a dedicated web page, uh, oxnard.org slash redistricting. So that's where all of the, uh, the mapping tool, there's currently an FAQ and all of the uh, documents that have been publicly presented available right now. Thank you, Mr. Zaragoza. Okay. Uh, uh, if we have no other questions, then uh, I would like to share this information. And now I'm going to open the public portion of, of the hearing. Members of the public were invited to sign up to speak on this item on the city website. Anyone who signed up before the deadline has three minutes to speak on this item. Madam Clerk, do we have any speakers on this item? Yes, we do, Mayor. Okay, so um, notice that we have five uh, public speakers and I'm gonna call the speakers from the list and then, uh, and then we'll go from there. So we have, the, I'm gonna call the first uh, two speakers and the first one is Lawrence Paul Stein, followed by Douglas Partello. Lawrence Stein, three minutes. Mayor, Mr. Stein has not called in at the moment. However, oh. we do have Debbie Mitchell on the line. Okay, how about Douglas Partello? Because he was next in the list here. He has not called in as of yet. Okay, so we'll go ahead with Debbie uh, Mitchell. Mitchell, excuse me. Miss Debbie Mitchell, you may unmute by pressing star six. Hi, Debbie. Hello. Hi. You have three minutes to speak. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I have I have uh, just really a couple of a couple of issues here um, regarding the redistricting of city council districts. Trying to step back from politics and the council person behind the districts is a big ask. In our district number one, our council member has been very helpful in helping our community be aware of all Oxnard as a whole. By creating communities of interest, I would hope that we, the public, not take these boundaries of difference, but rather boundaries of voices to come together behind the whole of Oxnard. For my specific community, as a resident in the Harbor and Beach area, I feel that our needs are a complex balance of maintaining the area we live in and preserving and protecting the visitor serving nature of our community for all of Oxnard and beyond. Our ability to do this is sometimes discounted as being seen as only the rich people at the beach. 
yet our community is economically diverse. Also, most who live in this area are in support of and welcome the visitors to the beach and to the harbor. Our concerns on water quality in the harbor impacts all visiting the harbor and the beach areas, as well as our concerns on infrastructure and capital improvement projects. That said, I would rec recommend and hope that the public take interest in the county redistricting in the upcoming report on the agenda, as I would hope that we not divide communities of interest in Oxnard between county districts and that we use the county redistricting to cross check our city districts. And um, I, I, I will be making maps as soon as that data is available. Thank you very much. Thank you, Debbie. Our next speaker is Barbara Mackey Ortiz, followed by Vanessa Valdez. Barbara Mackey Ortiz. Barbara Mackey Ortiz, you may unmute by pressing star six. Thank Hi, you. Barbara. You have three minutes Hi. to speak. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor Saragosa and council members. My name is Barbara Macri Ortiz, an Oxnard resident. And um, I kind of wanted to put things in perspective a little bit because, you know, we just started these district elections in the in the city, what, just in, I think, 2018. And I think, you know, they've worked really well. We have better representation and more representatives has made our city stronger and more responsive. I think the council members are doing a good job working together as a council. And I think that their proximity to their own neighborhoods make them naturally more responsive and provide better perspective for the council and deliberation. Um, so I think since we're new at this, people are learning little by little and becoming accustomed to the representation and the representatives. For this reason, I would recommend that we try to keep the same district boundaries as much as possible, uh, understanding that we need to balance uh, our districts. You know, I think having six districts was a good decision, but this is still a work in progress. So I don't think we should mess with it too much uh, or any more than we have to, except well, for one consideration that I think we should think about. What is the value or is there any well, value of well, having, ha having people in the same uh, supervisor district and city council district? Um, that's probably a question more for uh, the next discussion, but uh, I think there may be some synergy there that we may try to take advantage of in terms of building the um, building the strength of our electoral system in the in the city. Uh, that's basically it, and I look forward to playing with the maps and seeing what we come up with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your input. Next speaker is Vanessa Valdez. Vanessa Valdez. Madam Clerk, do we have Vanessa on the line? But, um, Sorry, Mayor, we do not have our next speaker. It's not available. How about um, Mr. Stein and also Partello? I'm sorry, they did not dial in. They are not on. They are not in our um, call-in room. Okay, so the, the next question I'm going to ask: Do we have any other speakers? No, Mayor, we do not have any additional speakers at this time. Okay, so then I'm closing the public hearing. And council members, do you have any questions or comments you'd like to share at this time? We do have a hand up by council member Turan. Okay, well, okay, council member Turan. Thank you very much, Mayor. Uh, I just want to thank the um, consultants again for the uh, presentation and thank all the staff time that has been put into this and that's continuing to go into it between now and um, the rest of this process. And I just wanted to take a moment to uh, acknowledge that, but also please encourage 
members of the public who are watching this now or watch it as a recording, uh, please uh, look at this, look at the staff report, look at the information available. Uh, staff is available. If there are questions, you can email them uh, and you can connect with them in a number of different ways, but please participate in this process and um, really look at uh, what are some different ways that we can um, balance out the needs that we have in numerically for our districts, but also uh, maintain representation for each of those districts and citywide. So uh, that's uh, my comments, Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Council Member Madrigal. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, real quickly, uh, as always, you know, uh, we would love a lot of public participation in this process. Uh, we did receive a lot of uh, participation last time with maps. Uh, the winning map was actually uh, presented by uh, the public. It was not a city map, uh, just for everyone's um, information. And then as a reminder with everything, you know, we went to districts uh, for a reason. Yes, uh, many will argue it was a threat of a lawsuit, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we as a city uh, did not fight uh, the process of going into districts. Um, so please, uh, there is a big reason why we went into districts and it was for proper representation and that cannot be lost in this process um, because then it will be very easy for us to redo this whole process again. Uh, we need to keep that in mind uh, as a council and uh, all of us as residents of the city of Oxnard. Thank you. Thank you. And if we have no other speakers, I'd just like to thank, you know, the uh, uh, Mrs. Parks for excellent uh, presentation and also our, our um, city attorneys Steve and Ken and, and Mrs. Zaragoza. By following all the criteria and the priorities, you know, to make sure that this record geographically con contiguous, that we have the geographic integrity for the local neighborhoods, as was mentioned, and also the community interests in a manner that minimizes division and geographic integrity as a city is respected in a manner that minimizes this division. And of course, you know, the priorities and order that that, uh, that the um, redistricting process uh, uh, actually really uh, favors. So I, I wanna thank you. So in this item is to receive one more. Mayor, we I'm have sorry. a hand up by council member Perello. Okay, council member Perello. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to bring this to the, to the rest of the council. I've gotten a couple of texts that uh, this is not available on TV. They have been able to find it on YouTube. If we have more public meetings, I need to make sure that these things are working, and if they're not, we let the public know ASAP what they need to find. I want to thank uh, Councilmember Madrigal for his comments. When I first got on the council in June of 13, I pushed for districts and there was no traction until Mr. Madrigal got on council. And there was still traction, but not enough. The lawsuit was instrumental, but Mr. Madrigal is 100% right. I supported him and he did too for district representation, representation of a community. Um, <clears throat> I'm very grateful to the people that spoke in public tonight, the public speakers. I'm obviously grateful to the people that spoke from my district. And uh, it has been very rewarding serving that district. I enjoy it. Um, look forward to seeing what the public is going to do. I need to, this was distasteful, but I need to repeat. District 1 was created and I was told when it was going to be me, I was told it's all the rich guys. Well, it's not all the rich guys in District 1. And I appreciate that speaker saying that because facts are facts. And uh, it is, I am surprised to see District 1 as the one closest in the population. But again, thank you, Mayor. And, and I really do, I compliment Mr. Madrigal because I hope we get some pre presentation by the public in this. Last time there was tremendous amount. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you for your comments. I'd like to share that uh, no additional comments from council members. Uh, so the purpose of this public hearing was to receive a report and receive public input. No additional council action is required at this time. Thank you so much. So our next item, uh, let me get this away. This is a city attorney in the subject selection of a revised supervisorial district map for 
requested adoption of the Ventura County Board of Supervisors. And the recommendation that the uh, City Council consider select one of two recommended draft maps for the supervisorial districts for the Ventura County Board of uh, Supervisors. And also adopt a resolution, and I'll read the resolution, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Oxnard requests that the Board of Supervisors of the County of Ventura adopt an, the attached district map based on the map's compliance with the required state law, including the map's preservation of geographic integrity of the City of Oxnard and incorporated cities within the County of Ventura, that the map's preservation of local neighborhoods and communities of interest within the city of Oxnard and throughout the county of Ventura and the maps, the easily identifiable boundaries. If we don't do this today, then the, the next item would be is to continue this item till October the 5th, 2021, to take a formal action at that time, requesting that the Board of Supervisors adopt a specific supervisorial map. And of course, I'd like to share that this, this is under Measure M, this is a pre-recorded presentation, and we do have the the uh, Ashley Golden here, and we also can Roselle and Jason Zaragoza, and also Steve Fisher for any questions. So, council members, any questions on this item? Councilman Perello, just one. Uh... I forgot to say last time. I want to thank the city attorney's office because the public has no idea what's involved and neither did the council when it first happened. They are working like mad, ladies and gentlemen. I thank you for the city attorney's office for helping out here. Okay, so I, what I have uh, to start off with, I have some, some speakers that I like to call at this, at this time and then we can go from there. So we have the first speaker that we have is Renee Ayu followed by Douglas Partello. Renee? Renee? Yes? Yes, thank you. You have three minutes to speak. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor Zaragoza and uh, council members. Um, my name is Renee Ayu and I'm with the Harbor and Beach Community Alliance. We, want to, we support the city's right to seek fair and equitable representation on the Ventura County Board of Supervisors. We agree this may be best achieved by minimizing the fractionalization of the city's communities and effectively keeping Oxnard residents within two county supervisor district versus three. No city in the county should be divided into three districts as Oxnard has been. It is also critical that redistricting results in the Channel Islands Harbor and beach neighborhoods grouped within one single county supervisory district. This means geographically keeping the neighborhoods within the boundaries of Fifth Street to the north and Victoria Avenue, including the Silver Strand area to the southeast and the Pacific Ocean on the west in a single supervisory district as a community of common interests should be. Our neighborhoods have repeatedly proven we are a community of common shared interests, not only by location, but by our actions and united positions on major issues. We have acted on behalf of the cities and our concerns, participated in city and county meetings and workshops, lobbied and worked together on many community projects. We speak up not only us, but the residents of both Oxnard and Ventura County. It is also crucial that our Harbor and Beach communities are grouped in a district that understands coastal neighborhoods, values coastal resources, and works to protect them all for all to enjoy. We support redistricting that achieves fair and equitable representation on the Ventura County Board of Supervisors for both the city and the Channel Islands Harbor and Beach communities. We believe option 1D, 1D does the best and ensures our right to proper and effective representation. So we will continue to support the city's right to seek fair and equitable representation. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Douglas Partello, followed by Lorraine Efres. Douglas Partello.
Mayor, Mr. Douglas Bartello is not available. Okay, then we have Lorraine Efres, followed by Debbie Mitchell. Ms. Efres? Yes, I am here. Hi, thank you. You have three minutes to speak. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Mayor, Council, and fellow residents. I have scrutinized both these maps, 1C and 1D, and regret that I was unable to participate earlier on the Board of Supervisors with public input. I, I also regret that we only have two maps in contention at this time. And I do wanna say that it was a very difficult thing to do to enlarge them and lay them side to side with fortunately a map I got from INCO that actually had the various neighborhoods delineated. It would have been a lot easier if the maps that you were presenting tonight did have the neighborhoods delineated. So I suggest that you make it easy on the fifth, if we have to go forward to the fifth by showing that. I do wanna say that with what Renee has said and also with what Debbie said earlier about keeping the harbor and beach communities together, including Silver Strand. And I do believe you've done that on both maps C and D. However, it is not accurate to say that you have not, that you have succeeded in giving us only two supervisorial districts because Ormon Beach is being left out and was referred to in the presentation as an uninhabited area. But if you're familiar with Ormond, we it is a much beloved part of Oxnard and dozens and dozens of Oxnard persons, some of whom have passed, have given hundreds of thousands of hours to try to return Ormond Beach to its wetland state, to get rid of the Superfund site next door, to make it into an educational resource. And it is going to be put into District 2. I think District 2 will do a good job. It does create a third supervisor. So please let us not delude ourselves that we really have two. We have two for the larger inhabited parts of Oxnard. I want to say about the beach and the harbor area. This has been an area that has been pushed out of Oxnard for as long as I can remember. There was one mayor several mayors ago who told me to my face after speaking to a branding consultant that he had forgotten to tell the consultant that we were a coastal city. Oxnard is probably the only city in the entire country that doesn't make use of its coast. And in determining the many projects, I did note that the city manager put down at one time to exploit the coastal area, which has never been done. And it kind of breaks my heart that we're going to be put into district, to a district that's contiguous with Ventura and loop together with Ventura. So perhaps we'll end up uh, learning how to maximize the use of both the Oxnard and Ventura coastal areas and bring in El Rio as a major symbol of Oxnard, which is also being pushed out of the, the downtown, so to speak, area and put into District 1, and that will get a nice Latino vibe on our coastal area. I, I really regret that we have to do this. I wish we could keep Oxnard as just one city because the outskirts, Ormond and our beach and harbor area are not really being considered with the central parts. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker is Debbie Mitchell, followed by Barbara Mac Ortiz. Debbie Mitchell. Ms. Debbie Mitchell, you may unmute by pressing star six. Ms. Mitchell? Yes, sorry. Hello. Hello. Thank you. You have three minutes to speak. Okay. Um, thank you, Mayor, uh, uh, City Council, and all of the consultants for the hard work on this. Um, I strongly support Option 1D uh, for two reasons. One, 
the harbor and beach community is kept together in one district. Two, this map appears to create a sane split of the high density of Oxnard and corrects the division created by the last supervisory districts, which left a very important part of South Oxnard divided. Um, so for that reason and in support of HBCA, I do understand Lorraine's issues with Ormond Beach, um, but I would, I would hope that being that this is a part of Oxnard, that that third supervisory position um, for Ormond would give us three supervisors that are well aware of the, of the valuable assets of our coastal community. Uh, so again, I, at this point, I strongly support option 1D. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Barbara Mackey Ortiz. Barbara? Barbara, you may unmute by pressing star six. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Barbara. You have three minutes to speak. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mayor Saragosa and council members. Uh, my name is Barbara Macri Ortiz, and I'm speaking tonight as a longtime Oxnard resident. And one that I think the most important thing I got to say is slow down. I don't think it's a good idea for the city council to make any decision on a map quite yet. There are a lot of considerations, and we need to make sure that we completely think things through. You know, with respect to the county, there are some legal considerations. Our county is over 43% Latino. This population deserves two competitive districts. So how that is accomplished has not been figured out yet, but Oxnard should not complicate the process by selecting its district prematurely. Also, we need to think about the key areas and our neighbors that benefit from the fifth district representation and also the areas where our city would benefit from being able to represent them. We want our supervisor to have some leverage on the board to make sure that our supervisor is not discounted as just the minority community's representative. How do we do that? I think we need to think that through. I will admit that the first map I drew included as much of Oxnard as possible that could possibly fit working within the parameters of the law but I am starting to rethink that a little bit. We have some time to figure this out. There is no need to rush to a decision tonight. Keep in mind that you are making a decision that will impact our community for the next 10 years. Also, all districts have to be balanced. So we are playing a game of dominoes. It's not easy and we need to really think it through. So please slow down. Take a breath. Let's think this through and do our due diligence so we can come up with the best decision for Oxnard, both for today and for the next 10 years. And I would say that with respect to Ormond Beach, I have to um, echo the comments of Lorraine. I think it's very important. And if it is uninhabited, or there's not very much population there, which there's not, I don't see why our district can't come down and, and uh, cover that. I know our community has worked very, very hard on Norman Beach. And um, it would be a shame if we couldn't have representation for Norman Beach from our own uh, supervisor. But in summary, I just want to urge you to slow things down a little bit, take a breath, and we really need to think this through. Um, and I, I would ask you to to uh, continue the decision making till I think they said in the report October 5th, that gives a little bit of time to see what things we can do that will make sense for our community going forward for 10 years and having a supervisorial district that has some respect, power and leverage on the um, Board of Supervisors as a whole. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank day. you, Barbara. That's our last speaker. I'd like to have Ken. Ken, uh, um, Mr. Mayor, can we just double check and make sure if uh, Mr. Partello's on now? Okay. Just give him uh, one more opportunity. Partello in? Yeah. 
On, excuse yeah. me. Mayor, Mr. Portello did not call in. However, we do have Mr. Lawrence Stein on the line. Okay, let's put, Stein, let's put him on for three minutes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Stein, you may unmute by pressing star six. Thank you very much, Madam Clark. I'm being disrespected again. My name wasn't called when you listen to people speak, and now you bring me up at the last second. I asked for public documents on this, and particularly the census maps. The city clerk refused to provide the census maps to me, even though I submitted a public request for these maps. We have three supervisors representing portions of Oxnard. There's no reason why we can't have three supervisors again. There's gerrymandering going on. Yes, we had one district that was entirely within Oxnard, and that was good for Oxnard. We also had two other districts that had representatives on the supervisory board. That's three supervisory boards out of five. That gives a lot more thought for representation. The previous speaker made mention of the fact that you need to think, things, think these things through. This is a decision that's going to affect us, as the previous speaker mentioned, for 10 years. 10 years. You're going to be dead by then, Mr. Mayor, most likely because of your age. Many of us are <laughs> concerned you. the fact that this is being rushed through. We have no way of knowing how much time we have to left on these items, but you won't, be, you won't give the public the maps to make these decisions or provide input. The city clerk refuses to make these documents available to the public when we ask for them. Thank you, Mr. Stein. Uh, just, uh, Mr. Stein, just want to share with you that my mother lived to be almost 100 years old, so I got a, a couple of years to go. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> but anyway, the, um, Ken, you know, the, the uh, supervisorial decision that we're making today is because the Board of Supervisors is going to be holding meetings soon and make decisions without our input. Is that... Uh, can, can you share a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. Under state law, the Board of Supervisors has to adopt their map on or before December 15th. Uh, by mid-October, the board is going to start their deliberations to consider maps which are being drawn by their demographer as well as by uh, city residents and county residents. Uh, so it is important that the city provides its input as, as soon as possible. Um, if I can address some of the issues which were raised, mm -hmm. um, Mr. Stein uh, raised issues about when documents were available, as was mentioned for the, the last public hearing, uh, the state did not get its revised uh, mm -hmm. census documents uh, available until September 27th. So just as soon as we got the documents available, we literally were uploading them and printing them out uh, tonight, uh, 15 minutes before the city council uh, meeting started. So that information is there. As far as the district, uh, the, the draft supervisorial maps, those were reviewed and uploaded mm -hmm. well in advance of the meeting. So they were available. Um, happy to address uh, the other issue. Uh, there are a lot of different maps. We ask our demographer to, to draw a variety of maps so the city council could carefully consider uh, the options that are available. Uh, just want to mention just one thing regarding uh, the number of districts that are in uh, options 1C and 1D. It is true that both maps have three districts, but only two of them are deemed inhabited. Uh, so Ormond Beach would be uh, in a, another district, but it's not considered inhabited. Mm -hmm. uh, the reason why that could not be included within District 5 is that it would block off uh, Port Wainimi, so no other supervisor could uh, mm -hmm. represent Port Wainimi, and that would make a substantial imbalance. The contiguous, right? Yes, they have to be contiguous, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so you can't jump over the water. So that is, it is required to have a, a beach access in order for Port mm -hmm. Wainimi to be represented by another district. Mm -hmm. um, if the council is interested, I'm happy to go over um, some of the, the, the concerns that we had with the, the current map. And, and the reasons why we selected uh, to recommend 1C and 1D. Just give us an information. Then. Okay, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, oh, can I continue? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you want a question before uh, Ken? No, I'll wait till he's done with his comments. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
So as, as laid out in the presentation, there's five criteria that uh, is to be considered in the adoption of a supervisorial MAC map. That includes that the districts are, are contiguous, that you look at the local neighborhoods of interest, that the geographic uh, integrity of the cities is respected in a manner that minimizes the division, that the district boundaries are easily identifiable, and that they're geographically compact. Mm -hmm. Here are the concerns that, that we as staff have with the existing uh, map, which of course is, will be changed based on the new census numbers. Uh, the current supervisorial map doesn't preserve the geographic integrity of Oxnard. Um, as the map is currently drawn, Oxnard is divided into three different districts. And if you could move to the closer, mm -hmm. there we go, there we go. Okay, we don't have that one, okay. Mm -hmm. It's divided in three different districts and each one of those districts is inhabited. Um, mm -hmm. Some neighborhoods of interest are uh, divided. Uh, there's four neighborhoods that are split between district three and district five. And district three includes three districts in South Oxnard that should be part of district five based on the neighborhood, uh, the community of interest. Also two, based on anecdotal evidence and other uh, information we've received, uh, a number of the city's residents, including those in South Oxnard, uh, are unclear who their supervisor is because of the, uh, the splitting of the neighborhoods and having some districts in South Oxnard represented by a supervisor that's based uh, in Camarillo. So in our approach, uh, we looked through all the maps. We carefully looked. We made a lot of consideration of the 10 maps, uh, which Doug Johnson of National Demographics drew. Um, we wanted to consolidate the inhabited portions of Oxnard into no more than two districts. It would be ideal in a perfect world if we could have one supervisor, but based on the population of Oxnard, it is higher than the allowable population uh, based on US Supreme Court uh, decisions. We also wanted to reunite some of the established neighborhoods in Oxnard that have been split by the last map. We also, as part of the redistricting, we didn't want to do damage to other cities in Ventura County by dividing them into multiple districts. Some of the maps that you will see, um, options three, three B, four and four B um, did create some, some different uh, divisions throughout the city and the county but all those maps divided other cities into multiple parts. The option three and three B divided Camarillo, I believe into the three different districts and the four and four B divided Camarillo into two districts and also split up Simi Valley. Um, so we also wanted to create district boundaries that are easily identifiable and understandable. So if you could go to, to map uh, one C and one D just so we can can show the, let's go with, let's start with 1D if you could please. 1, 1D is in David, please. Mayor, if I can ask when they get the map on there, can they please identify it's 1C or 1D because there's no label on the maps. Okay, thank you. So that's 2B, if you could go to, B. to, to 1D as in David, please. Maybe just take over. Got 3B there, there's four. And I think they're flipping through the appendix of the extra maps. The one C and one D are up in the main part of the presentation. Mm -hmm. Diego, do you have okay. Jason? There it is. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay. So just wanted to bring this up as an example. When you look at the map, especially in South Oxnard, there are very set boundaries. So it's very clear uh, mm -hmm. where, where the boundaries are. It, it's not jig jag. It's, it's not dividing uh, neighborhoods. So I think that's, that's an important factor that we're looking at. And both map 1C and 1D do what I think is a very good job of, of drawing those, those boundaries that are clear and, and understandable and do not um, divide those, those neighborhoods. So staff uh, can 
recommend uh, either map one C or D, but uh, these are based on our analysis and uh, we're happy to take any questions that uh, the council may have regarding the maps or the other eight maps, which our demographer prepared. Okay, uh, Councilman, uh, 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 Mayor Pro Tem, and then uh, Councilman Perello. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I, I spent the better part of the last couple of days looking at these, and especially at 1D and 1C today. Um, I, For the local aspect of Oxnard, I prefer 1D because I think it keeps the, the core of Oxnard more intact than 1C does. Where I have heartache with both of these maps is that it has an effect on other supervisorial districts. And I'll use District 1 as an example. It separates Ojai from Ventura. And there's a real strong sentiment um, in the West County, especially the Ventura Ojai area, that they want to remain contiguous. And I, I talked to a lot of people, made a lot of phone calls over the, the last week. And I know that in District 5, there's also a loss of some of El Rio and Nyland Acres to the District 5 supervisorial um, position. And that I think there are going to be some concerns with that with the District 5 representative. So, and the reason I bring this up is we have worked very, very hard trying to develop a stronger working relationship with the Board of Supervisors where it comes to Channel Islands Harbor. And I think we've come a long way and developed a good um positive relationship and my fear is that if we turn around and take a vote on proposing a map that splits one or two supervisorial districts from the way they are currently that that might be a little antagonistic um i i would hope that it wouldn't be but you know working relationships are working relationships and we do need to work together and be dependent on those supervisors i do agree with the concept of um, keeping Oxnard to two supervisors as opposed to three. And I think honestly, on, at the Board of Supervisors level, there really is not an issue with that concept. I, I think they agree with that in theory. So I, I'm comfortable there, but I am not comfortable going on the record of, of telling District 1 or District 5 uh, supervisors of, we wanna split some of your representation up. I, I think, I would have liked to see some other options. And so because of that, I'm going to have an extremely difficult uh, time supporting either one of these options tonight. In fact, it will likely be a no support vote. And I bring that up because if as a counselor, we're going to take an action for a resolution, I think it should be unanimous. And unfortunately, I don't think it will be unanimous. And that that's not a good way to propose a anything to the County of Ventura at this point. So my suggestion would be, if it's not gonna be unanimous, and, and as I said, I don't think I'll be able to support this, so it probably won't be unanimous, that we as individual council members um, propose to the Board of Supervisors as an individual um, what we think should happen. And I know some cities, the city of Ojai, and I believe one other city is has had their city manager write in on behalf of the council and say, here's what we propose for your district mapping exercise um, and has kept the elected body uh, out of taking a vote on a resolution. So I am, uh, again, I appreciate all the staff's work. I know it's not an easy job and, and it is a challenge because Oxnard is one quarter of this county's population and they have to are five districts. So just simple logic will tell you that Oxnard has to have at least two uh, supervisor districts in it. Um, and I would prefer to have two as opposed to three. Uh, I think that that would not be a problem for all the supervisors, but it's just the unanticipated uh, aspect of this that might create grief for them. And I, I'm just concerned about how hard we've worked to have a good, strong working relationship. And this might jeopardize it at that point. So I would rather, um, take a step back, do this as individual council members, and maybe really rethink this um, at some later point in time. So those are my comments, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, uh, Bert, uh, let, let me share a couple of words here before I, I go over to you. Uh, first of all, I, uh, I, I want to thank the Mayor Pro Tem for sharing what he did, because we have such a good relationship now with, with the county, you know, with the 
the tax sharing agreement with the, with the different things we're doing at the harbor with the hotel and and we have a lot of good uh, things coming out of the the county and the city but uh being there on the city council and i was there for 10 years ago i can tell you that to me this is only a recommendation it's really we can share this information it doesn't mean they're going to do it but uh, once they get into uh, into a dialogue once they get into into discussions this whole thing might be different than, than anything else. I just want to share that, you know, only as a perspective, only as a person that's been there before. But to me, this is only a recommendation that potentially could help, you know, the the, the fifth district become to a two supervisorial district. And and I respect you for that, Mayor Pro Tem. But I wanted to share that with you that they're going to do whatever they believe is to their own benefit. And to I believe that this is basically only a recommendation from the city of Oxnard for the residents and, and to have a say so in, in, in the uh, redistricting of the supervisor districts. And by the way, um, I think uh, if it's still the same within a, a few hundred uh, or maybe a couple of thousand people, I think each district is about 168,000. And the difference between a 202 and, and, uh, and what we have is about 30 some thousand more residents in Oxnard than than um, than to make it a, a complete district. I just want to share that with you, uh, Councilman Perello. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, mm -hmm. I think the Mayor Pro Tem, the longest serving member on this council gave some very wise advice. Uh, I do favor one of the specific maps, but I do see that if it's not gonna be unanimous, I would not advise going with a split vote and a recommendation, we go in weak, like a, a dog minus two legs. And I don't think that's a good move for us. The issue that I have with respect to the maps is a question. If we were to lobby for a map, a specific number of the maps, does the county have the same number map? Or do we, uh, how do we lobby for that map on the county level? That's a question. But I do agree that, um, and, I, and I wish memory was better, but I know it's at least a dozen, I believe it's at least a decade possibly longer, the agreement between the county and the, har and the city in the harbor was out of action. It's taken a long time to get that. And uh, humans being blessed with all the, the good and the bad, grudges can be carried for a long time. And the advice of the mayor pro tem, I think is wise. People have long memories and payback is payback. So I don't think it would be wise to upset everybody. There's a lot of people that want things here, including myself. I think that, it, you know, I remember going back to the one that I was aware of was John Flynn, one of the strongest supervisors I ever met. Um, he got a lot of things done, ruffled some feathers, made some enemies, but he got a lot of things done for his district. The, uh, uh, but the things have changed. And I live in uh, Supervisorial District 1, and there was a rocky start to my relationship of getting involved in, in my neighborhood with Supervisorial District 1. It worked out. Uh, we have supervisorial district one representing areas where there's levies and there's issues and it's worked out and they and all of the supervisors chipped in mayor pro uh, the current mayor john zaragoza on the board of supervisors we all chipped in but i i uh, i think that the wisest advice if the if the mayor puts in were to make that in a motion i would i would second that that we don't take a position on this because i think that we could really shoot ourselves not in one foot but both foot that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you. And we have, I think it was uh, Council Member uh, Mazergal and then uh, Basua. Or the other way around, Council Basua. Um, I think Council Member Madrigal was before me, but thank you. Um, I, I want to thank staff for all their hard work on putting these maps together and the staff report. Um, I actually was going to say a lot of what um, our mayor pro temp said. I, if I have to pick one map, if I had to, it would definitely be 1D. I'm not really happy with Ormond Beach not being um, part of this district um, that we would be proposing. But I think that we're going to be making a decision that is going to be affecting a lot of people for a very long time. I know in, our, in the South End District 5, um, I have two different supervisors 
and one is very active, the other one is not. Um, I would like to ask uh, our city manager, um, it was mentioned that Ojai wrote a letter um, with recommendations. I think maybe we can all agree that we want two supervisors for Oxnard and that would be the best thing for Oxnard. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if that wouldn't be a better approach. I would like to see two supervisors for Oxnard, but I'm not really sure that these maps are something that I that I'm going to agree on. So I, I'd like to know what other options we have besides a resolution um, from the city manager. Thank you, Same thank day. you, Council Member. I, I think the the options were actually laid out quite well by the Mayor Pro Tem. I think if if you can find consensus, this would be a great mechanism. If mm -hmm. not, um, you all as elected officials, I would highly encourage you to each advocate. Um, for mm -hmm. something for on behalf of our city, or you can ask me to send a, a letter the way Ojai did, just making a request. In our case, it would be to keep um, to two supervisors. Okay. Okay, thank you. I greatly um, appreciate that. Um, I, I would like to make a motion um, not to approve any of these maps. Um, if we need more time to think about it, I'd like to come back in the October meeting to discuss a little bit further. Um, otherwise, I would be okay with our city manager sending a letter on our behalf if we all agree that we would like to only keep two um, supervisors for Oxnard and um, because again, I'm, I'm, I don't think I can support either 1C or 1D as far as the maps are concerned. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Um, I, my understanding is that we had a Mayor Pro Tem make a motion and, and also um, Perella seconded, and, but we still have a couple of council members that like to share some information. And um, no, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you have made a motion? No. Okay. I, didn't, I did not second a motion. Uh, I, I said if the mayor pro tem would, I would say. Okay. Okay. So then we uh, we have a motion by uh, Basua. Is there a second to what she shared? But we still have uh, Madrigal and also uh, Councilman Lopez to share. Mr. Mayor, I'm interested in hearing the other council members' comments, but I will second that motion. Okay. Then we'll we'll go ahead and go with uh, Madrigal and and followed by Councilmember Lopez. Thank you. Um, the city assistant city manager um, Golden, I believe, wanted to speak. I'll let her speak before me. Thank you, Council Member. Just one point on one of the items that Council Member Basua raised in terms of the criteria. Both maps um, that were before you for recommendation, both 1B, I'm sorry, 1C and 1D, had four things in common. Um, they consolidated the inhabited portions of Oxnard into two districts. They reunited established city neighborhoods. They did not divide other cities within the county into more than one supervisory district, and they created district boundaries that are easily identifiable and understandable. I was curious, um, Councilmember Basua, if you were looking rather than a map, but certain criteria that was important to the council, that there could be a, a letter sent um, that was the basis, and maybe there's consensus on those that criteria, which is outlined, I believe that's page three of the, the staff report right before it talks about option one as a map, but just a, another item to consider as you're looking at the maps, if, we're, if you're not um, interested in adopting a specific map, but discussing criteria, that there's a framework there for you to look at. Um. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, real quickly, I know it's gonna. I'll just start where I was gonna start before, even though I think it's irrelevant now. But I actually favored one uh, C. Um, I honestly, both maps I could live with. I still think that something better could have been um, done. Um, but uh, my biggest issue with it in general, though, 
uh, was um, actually our neighbors to the west or south, depending on where you live, and that would be Port Wingamy. Um, I don't think it would have gone through even whichever one we would have recommended simply because um, I think uh, many would argue and probably went out, but uh, the G word, uh, gerrymandering. I think Wainimi would have been way out there with um, District 2, which is the Conejo Valley, which is Thousand Oaks and whatever else, Newberry Park, Lake Sherwood and the whole area. I think that would have been something wrong with both maps and something that was kind of bothering me. Uh, the entire time. Um, as far as mapping goes, um, I know people in the community have reached out to me, uh, people from the city of Oxnard, people from Ventura, uh, people from the East County, and it's been a interesting exercise uh, trying to map these out. I've seen many different maps already. Um, I know everyone's main goal actually uh, is actually to put Oxnard into two districts, and most of the maps have done that. Uh, there is a map, map out there that divides Oxnard into three again, but it's at about, uh, divides the city into thirds, pretty much even. But I know that uh, public participation's out there. Uh, you know, I think, um, I don't think it, whatever we send out is a recommendation. Obviously um, the board of supervisors, it's their decision so they could take it as serious or not serious as they want. Uh, but we do need to uh, let our voice be heard as a city. Um, even, you know, obviously, uh, whichever map, or uh, we're not even doing maps, but, you know, uh, the ultimate goal of, you know, having two supervisors is crucial. So I agree with that. And hopefully, you know, we get something set. So thank you. Thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Lopez. Thank you, Mayor. And uh, definitely really appreciate this, having this dialogue and this conversation uh, amongst us all. I think we all have a uh, different perspective, uh, different experiences. And, uh, you know, we all agree that, that we should have, uh, you know, no more than two uh, supervisors, not by choice, but based on, on, on the guidelines and, and following, uh, following the, what the law is. So, um, it's definitely given, given me a lot more to, to think about. And I, I do appreciate the work um, that has been put forth by our staff. I mean, uh, this is a lot of data, a lot of numbers to consider and uh, all the, uh, the guidelines that need to be met in, in drawing these maps. So um, I, I, I'd have no problem with the two maps that were recommended by staff, either 1C or 1D. Um, I think there's, there's arguments and points um, in going either way. Um, my position with this, first and for, foremost, is as a representative, uh, one of, one of uh, seven representatives uh, for the city of Oxnard is that I need to advocate for, um, uh, for residents of Oxnard, um, for the city that, that I represent. Um, and so in, in looking at that, um, you know, who are we, who are we serving? Um, who do we need to ensure is being represented? And, and that's what leads me to really encourage everyone else for us to take a position, uh, actively take a position on the recommendation of, of either map. Um, because if it's, uh, if it's, my understanding, and, and, and I definitely ask for any, any correction, is that the last redistricting, the city did not take any position on it. And that is why we were uh, negatively impacted, especially looking at the south end of Oxnard, as uh, Council Member Basua mentioned, um, having two different uh, supervisors represent the represent. Um, causes some issues and, and, and misses the representation that we need on the county on some critical issues and reaching, bringing the services and meeting the needs of, of our residents. Um, so I, I do hear what everyone is saying. I appreciate the, the comments uh, from, from the public, from our residents and, and bringing that perspective even on Ormond Beach. Uh, which doesn't mean that we get rid of it as a city. It's still under under our city. There's still work that we can do. So I don't see that uh, as a problem, especially having the city of Port Wainimi uh, as a partner and working alongside them uh, to ensure that that we are moving our city forward and really again going back to meeting the needs and bringing the resources to to our residents in Oxnard. So uh, I 
I agree and, uh, and, and see that we need to have a, uh, it would be better to have a, a unanimous uh, position as a council, um, but I really think that you have to take your position and stronger role in making a recommendation to the Board of Supervisors on what Oxnard needs um, and, and doing it in a most strategic way. So thank you. Thank you, Council Member. Uh, City Manager. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I wanna try to help this along because I can, first of all, by the way, I think this has been a, a great policy discussion. Um, so let me, let me try to make um, some recommendations and, and I need um, our staff here to correct me if I'm wrong on the dates, but I believe that the county's first board hearing on this is on October 19th. And then I think they will have another one subsequent to that before they, they actually vote on a map. Um, but I wanna remind everyone that they will be entertaining many, many maps. And, and to, to, to what council member uh, Madrigal said, there's, are, there are lots of interest in the community probably from other cities as well as county staff themselves. So they're gonna look at a lot of maps. So I think that we can, we can hold off on a particular decision if the council A wants uh, and needs more time, but also we meet um, on October 5th and October 19th. And by the 19th, the county will have published at least the initial maps that they're reviewing. So you'll see what they're going to choose among. And, and if we're not prepared to send over uh, our city's position, whether it's by letter or, or a map or, or not, uh, there's still a little bit more time. Uh, I think staff, and, and this is, I take responsibility for this, uh, we were trying to be, we were being optimistic in hoping that we could stake out the city's position for the County Board of Supervisors to be aware of again, as I'm seeing other cities making their uh, interests heard formally. But if this count, if there's, if our body needs more time, there is a little bit more time. So I just want to put that out there as um, several options for you to consider tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. State Manager. I, um, I, I think we're not going to have a unanimous vote on this item, but I was uh, prepared to make a motion to approve 1D, because I think that 1D would uh, but it really would have helped us, you know, it potentially can help us, you know, with the two supervisorial districts. You know, and I remember when I was in the Board of Supervisors, I had a lot of concerns about the three supervisors representing the, uh, the city of Oxnard. You know, the, the, I know the uh, district one comes all the way down to Gonzales and in the east of, uh, of uh, Ventura Road, all the way to past Oxnard Boulevard. Then the third district took over from PV down to Ormond Beach to Wanimi and up to Hemlock. So I was prepared to, uh, to hopefully submit a, a motion to approve 1D. However, I respect the city council members that, that um, we we're not gonna have a unanimous vote. So consequently, I, um, I then will not share my, my motion for, for that reason. And of course there was some, ideas too that potentially maybe the city manager might send a letter on behalf of all of us you know so that might be another idea but that was my motion to but uh, i'm not going to share that anymore but we have Mr. Mayor, have we do have a motion on the floor with a second okay um, that was um uh, councilman basua basua and uh, and the second was it was it was me but i think uh, mayor Councilman and Councilmember Perello still have comments to make. I understand, but we have Basuas and second by you. Yes. Okay, Tehran and then Perello. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mayor and Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, I just was gonna ask for clarification on the motion because I feel like I heard um, that it was, it sounded like at first it was continue the item to the next meeting till October 5th. Um, and then I also heard about um, either individually reaching out or having the city manager draft a letter um, with a preference. So I'm just wondering if are we gonna, are we voting to do all of those things or I just wanna get clarification on that. We, we can uh, potentially have a, our city attorney, you know, reiterate that motion. Subject to um, Perello, do you have any other comments? 
Yes, I'd like the city clerk to restate the motion because the, the, I agree with Councilman Turan. It's not very clear what I'm going to be voting on, but I do want a clarification. I believe I heard one council member say something about cities would complain if Wainimi was in a district. Isn't Wainimi in District 2 right now? It's not if in I'm wrong, I'll admit it, but I think it is. Yeah, Senator Camarillo, yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you. But I, I, I won't vote on it until it's restated. Okay, but uh, go ahead. Okay. Oscar? Oscar? If Wanimi is with Camarillo, that means that's District 3, not District 2. District okay. 2 is the Conejo Valley correct. for correction purposes and accuracy. Okay, that's I, correct. thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank you. Okay, so uh, Madam Clerk, um, do you Mayor? want to repeat the motion? Yes, I would like to ask for clarification on the motion because we had a lot of input. Right. We have uh, Ken. Ken has uh, written down here. You want to? Yes. If he could please read it for us. Yes. Um, and Council Woman Basua, please correct me if I do not uh, properly articulate this. Uh, it was to forward uh, uh, a a letter uh, to the the Board of Supervisors outlining four different factors that the uh, Oxnard City Council would like to see in the supervisorial maps. These, the four items were to consolidate the inhabited portions of Oxnard into districts, reunite established Oxnard neighborhoods, and do not invite other cities within the county into more than one supervisorial district, and to create district boundaries that are easily identifiable and understandable by residents. Uh, Masuma, that's your first, and, and Mayor Pro Tem, that's your second. That would be my second, but also it does not preclude individual council members from writing individual letters of support or non-support to the board. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay, so we got a first and a second. Roll call. Oh, uh, excuse me, uh, Councilman Turan. Yes, so we have discussion on this. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just want to uh, thank um, Mr. Rizal and uh, uh, the city clerk for clarifying it. And thank you for making the motion, um, Councilwoman Vasua. Uh, I also thought that I heard that we were con considering continuing the item to October 5th as put in the recommendation. Was that not part of the motion originally? I don't, I don't think so. No, no, no that's not. Hmm. No, my, my motion was to go ahead and allow our city manager to um, forward a letter um, to the county supervisors and hmm. allow us to, like Mayor um, Pro Tem said, to do it individually if we choose to um, contact them on our own. No. Okay. Councilman Turan. Okay. All right, thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. And um, I appreciate all the discussion that we've had thus far. I would, um, you know, I know we're gonna do roll call right now, depending on where we go with this, if this motion, uh, were to not uh, prevail, I would like to make a motion to continue this item to October 5th. Um, so based right, on now the have a, right now, uh, council members, we have a motion and a second, and we're gonna take a roll call subject to Bert. Yes, I'd like to ask council member Vasua. Council member Vasua, assistant city, assistant city attorney, Ken Roselle read several points. When you made your motion, I did not hear those points. Did you mean to include those points? Yes, during the discussion, um, Ashley Golden went ahead and also clarified that the in in the council report, the, those were the four items. I think we That's said right. we could all agree that those four items, specifically the ones that we want to keep Oxnard within two supervisors, were extremely important to us. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, and I also said that I couldn't agree with. The maps because I also believe that Ormond Beach should stay with us. Um, so I said I couldn't support any of the maps. Okay, and the, and the only reason and yeah. the only reason I asked that question, Councilmember Basu, because I didn't hear you say that, and I want to make sure that that's what you want in your motion because it isn't Mr. Roselle or Miss uh, Golden making the motion; it's you and Mr. McDonald second, and we're going to vote on your motion. That's why yeah. I asked the question. Thank so, you. Yeah, and, so and I want to clarify that. I think based on what I heard and what I still continue to hear, and I heard what council member Lopez said, that she would want us to go ahead 
and pick a map, um, I think that at least what we can all agree on is that these four things are important, specifically the one to keep two supervisors within Oxford. Um, the drawing, and, and those are gonna be just my comments. I'm gonna just stop there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So roll call. Oh, I'm sorry, we have Councilman Lopez. Thank you, thank you, Mayor. I'm, I'm, uh, I uh, wanna ask um, Ms. Golden if she can, um, I, I know the city manager asked for uh, the dates of what the timeline is with the with the county, um, because I, I do strongly feel that we should make a recommendation on a map and, and you know, clearly we don't have a consensus on, on any map today. Um, so, you know, I would like to see uh, based on those dates um, and, and make a friendly amendment to, to what uh, council member Basua um, has brought forward is if we could continue the item when we are in a better position to select a map and if we can't come to a consensus, then 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 we you know then we forward a letter uh, from the city manager. But we have a time issue. Is that may I, I? I'm sorry, um, Mayor. May I ask a question? I mean, I, I I'd like to ask Miss Golden if we table these item item, will the maps change, or are these the final maps? Because if the maps are not gonna change, it's not gonna change my decision as far as me picking the map. But if, the, but if staff's gonna come back with different maps, that might persuade my decision. If I may interject, um, I think the key thing about having more time is we will start to actually see of all the maps that the county sorts through, which ones they're actually going to consider. And that may inform our body uh, we may see a map there that that we can't that you can support, or if you if you see the maps that they're considering that you really yeah. oppose, then you may want to consider sending one of the maps we have. So, so it's, it's just playing for time in that sense. Okay, so can I restate redo my motion with the the current motion stays, but adding after the county meets and shows us their maps, we can come back and maybe support a map that they have, that they're going to consider. But- How about we worded something to the effect of if another map can be produced that um, does not create the concerns that we have at this point, that we would be willing to reconsider. Would that I mean, work? What, but the, that the, that the, would the, definitely work. Thank the you. The question would be what Thank what time? Uh, my apologies, because I think we have a, a a period of time that we have to make a decision. And is that uh, that that is correct? Uh, at this point in time, the the board is meeting next on October nineteenth, and we'll start to consider maps uh, based on the schedule on the county's website. Mm -hmm. uh, there is indication that they are considering the adoption of the map. Uh, in early November, uh, and the deadline under state law for them to that's, adopt the map is December 15th. That's a concern. Look, we have a motion and, and a second, but I have two more items before uh, we vote. Uh, we had to run first and then Pirello. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just as part of this discussion, I know we're hearing, uh, you know, possibly a Another version of maps or additional maps will be drawn that we can consider that maybe um, look favorably or something we can uh, formally oppose that come from the county or are submitted to the county. My question is, um, and I think it was uh, touched on lightly already, um, do we foresee any scenario where Ormond Beach remains uh, part of one of the supervi supervisorial districts um, that would be one of the two that we're asking for. So, I mean, it's, we want two districts um, at the county level, but it seems that uh, if we have two, based on what I've seen so far, it would make it difficult to keep it contiguous with Ormond Beach, but also still have Wainimi be represented and still meet the numerical requirements of the, each of the county districts. So I'm just asking that in a general sense, if that's difficult to answer at this point, that's an acceptable response as well. But I just wanted to ask that. I don't think we can go up. So, Ken, go 
I'd be happy to dis discuss that. Uh, as we mentioned early on, uh, our demographer drew 10 different maps. Some of the maps, uh, option three, three B, four and four B would uh, have Ormond Beach as part of one of the, the districts. The issue though that that staff had with those maps is that it did multiple things, but in general, one, it would divide the city basically in half and would split uh, neighborhoods such as in South Oxnard between two districts. Secondly, and I, I wanna indicate the staff heard loud and clear uh, the issues of, of how the map redrawing would affect other jurisdictions. The maps that are option three, three B, four and four B would divide a number of other cities uh, in the county. Um, the three B, three and three B series would divide Camarillo into three different parts. And uh, map four and four B would divide Camarillo into two and Simi Valley into two. So um, there are a lot of, every uh, time you make one change, there is a domino effect with other ones. So. One reason staff supported one C and one D, yes, it put the city into two inhabited districts, but it also had minimal impact on other jurisdictions other than moving Ohio from uh, district one to district three. It did not divide any other cities and it did not make any other kind of major changes. So we were looking for maps which would have, you know, the minimal amount of impact, but we also understand that, that some members of the council uh, believe that even those maps made too much changes. And, and, and potentially those maps could be acceptable. Otherwise, when you start separating the rest of the districts, uh, I, it's not gonna work, I just tell you much. Anyway, Councilman Perella. Yes, uh, this, this concept discussion is interesting, but the, the detail is we have our next city council meeting on the 19th, the same day that the Board of Supervisors meets at 8.30 in the morning. So if they do come up with a, with a map, We'd have to agendize it now with an unknown map for our council meeting on the 19th, unless, and this is my point, on a detailed fact, is there an opportunity to get the maps that the County Board of Supervisors is gonna be discussing on the 19th before the 19th, so we could have a special board meeting like we're having tonight to discuss what we wanna what we want to do. Can we agendize it? And remember, if that's not clear, I'll repeat it. Do you, does, we, do, that, that was clear, let me try this. Um, so I, I don't know how early uh, the, count, the county uh, publishes, but clearly they do publish before their meetings. So we can get those. We can right. agendize this if the council wishes for our council meeting on the 19th. Uh, they're not taking final action on the 19th. That's their first hearing before the board. That's a good point. Yeah. So there is a little bit of time. One other clarification under the Brown Act, uh, the county would need to post their uh, their agenda th three days in advance. So in theory, the maps would be available 72 hours uh, mm. before that hearing on the, on the morning of the 19th. So uh, it's they do not have a sunshine ordinance, so we, we would not see them, you know, a week or 12 days in advance. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so we have a motion by Councilman Basua. One more, oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> Councilman Lopez. Thank you, Mayor. And again, really appreciate, this is this is really great um, <laughs> with everyone. Uh, so just to, to clarify, because I think the, the, what, the, what the motion was, and, and um, if not, I would ask, uh, you know, yeah, what yeah. Council Member Basua is, is recommending is uh, sending the letter um, but the addition was to continue this to the 19th if, or, or is that something that, you know, I can suggest uh, amending to your motion so that we can consider um, on the 19th? You did make an amendment. I just want to make sure that's what council member Basua was. Okay. So we can look at it, right? Yeah. Correct. I'm, I'm not. Well, there's there's some logistical issues. Uh, if we get the maps uh, 72 hours before uh, our meeting on the 19th, our demographer will need to to look at them, and staff will also need to review them. So it's a uh, a very limited time period in which to do a, a, a kind of detailed analysis uh, that would need to occur. It's mm -hmm. it's possible, but uh, our demographer also is representing a number of other jurisdictions. So 
the bandwidth uh, may be limited as well. Mr. Mayor, if my, I mean, my friendly I mean, amendment was that to uh, continue with the motion, but if the maps were significantly changed, it would be open for bringing it back to council uh, on or before the 19th. Yeah, that was my understanding too. Uh, we have a city manager. If, if I can make a quick comment, I don't think that it's one or the other. I think there's no thing wrong with sending a letter with our principles stated That's right. early, uh, as early as tomorrow morning, or I'm sorry, Monday. Monday. Mm -hmm. um, and then review the maps because again, whether whether you as a body sends over one map or two maps or three maps, they will be reviewing many maps, exactly. right? So it, it, this isn't the dichotomy where they're going to choose our map or not. <clears throat> they might not right? even look at it. <laughs> right. So I think I think we can do both. Um, so I think we can send the letter out stating stating our your desires on those principles. And you can review whatever maps they're reviewing once they refine it. And then you can discuss on the 19th here, if you like any of their maps, if you want to send one of our maps because you don't like any of their maps, or if you like one of their maps, and but you want to tweak it a little bit. I think there's, there's time for that. Thank you. We're going to take roll call uh, subject to uh, Councilman Turan's uh, comments, last comments. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I think it was... Um... I think I'm okay on it, but maybe I could just check in with Mr. Rizell and the city manager. Uh, if we were to push to the 19th, which it sounds like that's something we're about to vote on, um, and the county's maps in theory would be uh, published no sooner than 72 hours prior to the public meeting, uh, but we agendize it and our sunshine ordinance says we have to get information out 12 days prior to our meeting um, do we run into any issues with that? Or it sounds like it's just we would amend the agenda and include those no, maps once let, they're available. Let Ken go ahead, Ken. That would be a, a classic subsequent need item that basically after the posting of the agenda, the item came up. In, in this case, the maps would be made available uh, uh, for the city council to review so we could agendize it and, and amend the agenda to include the particular maps which were presented to the council, mm -hmm. excuse me, to the board of supervisors. And, Great, and that's, thank, thank you. And oh, that's ahead, because please. that information would not be produced by us, but coming from another so, governmental body. Councilman Perello. Yes, uh, I don't like voting on things I don't totally understand. Can you please restate this before we have more discussion for the last time, please? And I appreciate the city attorney helping us the way he is here. Yes, we'll go ahead and repeat that. Yes, the, the motion is to direct the city manager to send a letter to the Board of Supervisors outlining the four principles um, which the, the, the Oxnard City Council wishes to see in the uh, supervisorial um, redistricting. These are as follows, that the inhabited areas of Oxnard would be consolidated into two districts. Uh, they would re reunite, establish Oxnard neighborhood, do not divide other cities in the county into more than one supervisorial district, and four, create district boundaries that are easily identifiable and understandable by residents. And then as a separate um, item uh, or part of that motion, allow the city council members to contact the board of supervisors um, directly to give their input on the particular map uh, in which they support. And there was also, if I could get clarification as well, um, to bring this back um, on October 19th, to uh, review maps which are presented, which would be presented to the Board of Supervisors on October 19th. Thank you, uh, Councilman Basu, are you okay with them? For your first. I just, I just wanna clarify this with uh, Mayor Pro Temp McDonald because the motion was to only bring it back if the maps are significantly, significantly different. Um, but if we wanna, Mayor, Mayor Pro Well, I, the term significant is a kind of a subjective term. What's significant to me may not be significant to others. So for the sake of simplicity, I would say if, if there are new maps to look at, let's let's take take the opportunity to look at them. Good point. Okay. So so that's a second thing. That's it. Okay. Okay, roll call. Uh, Mayor Saragossa. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem McDonald. Yes. Council Member Perello. Yes. Council Member Lopez. 
Yes. Council Member Madrigal. Aye. Council Member Basua. Yes. Council Member Turan. Yes. Thank you, motion passes seven to zero. Thank you, and there's quite a discussion. Again, I, I wanna thank uh, the speakers that spoke today in this item and Ken Rosal for doing a great job, Jason Zaragoza, Ashley, Steve, uh, Fisher, Alex, and, and all the staff that worked on this is a tremendous amount of work that, uh, and good discussion too. So uh, with that, uh, we'll adjourn. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Democracy works. <laughs>